Around the volcanoes of northern Rwanda rages a life and death struggle. The rainforest is a battlefield. Among its victims are teenage boys sent on suicide missions from Congo into Rwanda. Rare mountain gorillas are shot in a crossfire or even eaten by the hungry rebels. And the trackers trying to protect the animals are also in the crossfire. Seven volcanoes line the Rwandan border with Congo. In the shadow of one of them lies the prisoner of war camp of Mudende. 1,734 rebels are imprisoned at Mudende. Fighters for the Army for the Liberation of Rwanda, or ALIR. ALIR has bases and strongholds in the Congo from where they launch their attacks over the volcanoes into Rwanda. If you look at the, um, the leadership of Mali, if you look at the, those commanding the force, they are people who are on the category one list of those who plan to carry out the genocide. My rank is Colonel, and I am the Chief of Staff of Alir. And their clear aim in capturing power is to continue the genocide, which we believe is an unfinished mission. They will continue to fight until the Kigali regime has fallen. We will continue until change comes about. The push is to get back to Rwanda, capture power, and carry on genocide against the Tutsis of this country. Colonel Habimana and his men are known as the Inter Rahamwe, which means those who stand together. The Inter Rahamwe was at the forefront of the 1994 genocide when a million Rwandans were killed. When the Rwandan Patriotic Front won the war in August 1994, the former government and its Inter Rahamwe fled into Congo. There, they regrouped under the name of Alir. Since then, they've launched murderous attacks into Rwanda. Yes, there were some cases where civilians got killed. But those were isolated incidents. Some commanders acted without orders and killed civilians. For several years now, the Congolese government in Kinshasa and Zimbabwe have supported Alir. They've provided them with weapons, bases and training. As a result, Rwanda and Uganda have invaded northeast Congo. They justify their occupation by saying that they have to keep Alir away from their borders. Some arms we get at the front when we defeat the enemy. But finally, we also get arms from Kinshasa. We think we have soldiers between 30 and 40,000. Last May, Alir planned their biggest infiltration ever into Rwanda. Colonel Habimana was one of the masterminds behind the attack. Their aim was to bring in a major thrust uh, in the northwest, push as far as they can go, capture territory, and if we find a situation, the Warren City capture together as well. For the first infiltration, I arrived with about 4,000 troops. Alir planned to send in wave after wave of soldiers, hide and then regroup in the forest. With support from the local population, they would fight their way into the capital, Kigali. The infiltration took place through the rainforests of the Volcano National Park, on the border between Rwanda and Congo. These seven volcanoes are home to the world's last remaining mountain gorillas. Scientists say there are just 359 of them left. They are critically endangered which means there are less than 250 adults remaining. The mountain gorillas have been caught in the crossfire. The security of Rwanda is very important for the gorillas. It's also important that uh, we stop uh, the infiltrations coming from the Congo. 
this is a species just you know, on, the, on the brink of extinction. It just 350 animals, it, every single individual has a huge biological value. The Alir soldiers were ill-equipped for their mission. They had no food or medicine. They tried to steal potatoes from the local farmers, but couldn't find any. As they sneaked back into the forest on the 30th of May to hide for the night, they saw a gorilla. They shot the gorilla three times. Then they shot a second gorilla. I don't know if it survived or not. I saw the meat. It looked like that of a human. It was then that I thought they might eat me as well. I escaped, came down the mountain and surrendered. I cried my eyes out. I just, when those two were eaten, um, it was the, the worst thing that's happened in my professional life. It was really very hard to cope with. Warned of the infiltration, the Rwandan army launched a massive counter-attack. Around 2,000 Alir soldiers were shot dead and 2,000 captured. We've visited the Virunga mountains where a number of ill-equipped infiltrators, as told us by security personnel, had indeed crossed to the Rwandan side of the border in the Virunga mountains. According to this captured 13-year-old boy who couldn't trace his origin, the move was taken desperately in search for food. As a result, he says, they came across an isolated rare mountain gorilla and slaughtered it for survival, killing 10 of them on spot. The rebels who came from Masisi It was very rough conditions, very difficult. We found little to eat, no medicine. We had to use traditional medicine. The population uh, in the northwest surprised the attackers. Uh, by giving us uh, early warning and information about uh, the approach uh, because the, 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 the reconnaissance units had been spotted by, by the population. And furthermore, we had meager material means at the disposal of our army. We couldn't match the assault to the Rwandan army. Congo and Rwanda each have about 160 mountain gorillas in the volcanoes, Uganda the remaining 40 or so. Whilst the gorillas in Rwanda and Uganda have been well protected, in the Congo they have been slaughtered. Under heavy military escort, we travelled to the headquarters of the Virunga National Park, on the other side of the volcanoes inside Congo. There's little government control in the area, despite a lack of resources, Congolese conservationists are desperately trying to conserve their gorillas. But as the Alir soldiers fled back into the Congo after their failed infiltrations, tragedy struck. A famous silverback gorilla by the name of Rugendo was caught in the crossfire. They explained that he was caught in the crossfire. The military was camouflaged rebels that came from the other side. The guerrillas were in the middle. There was an exchange of fire. The male tried to defend his family. He was hit by a bullet and died. In 95, four were shot dead, and in 97, about 14 were shot dead. Um, and we don't know at the moment what happens. Either. But it isn't only the gorillas getting caught up. Many Congolese gorilla trackers, armed in order to protect their gorillas, have also been shot dead. Four guards have been killed whilst protecting the gorillas. The inter Rohanway kidnapped one, and three died in the battle whilst following the guerrillas.
It is unfortunate that those animals that are an international heritage and are protected worldwide had to be killed in this manner. But there you go. <laughs> Colonel Habimana entered the country on the 1st of July this year. He was arrested two weeks later whilst hiding in the home of a local farmer. In a massive propaganda drive, he was paraded around the countryside and then reunited with his family. He called on Alir to stop fighting. <laughs> There were many political changes. I saw that the government in Kigali was making an effort to improve the living conditions of its people. I think Rwanda is still a country uh, because we have those forces still in the Congo country. Uh, but before they abandon their ideology of genocide, they will continue to push. They are continuing to push right now. The Alir infiltration continues. Whilst we were filming at the prisoner of war camp at Mudende, a group of infiltrators was brought in. They were captured by the Rwandan army in the forest the previous day. Several had been shot dead and two were wounded. Among them was a boy of 12 and a boy of 14. We were allowed to film their interrogation. They said they had been sent to Rwanda to overthrow the government. Do you have a program in Alir to recruit children? Yes. If they get them, they recruit them. What is the problem with your leg? It is infected. The sharp sticks in the forest stung me. How many were you? We were about 21. Remove your jacket. Let's see. Do you have any relatives left? No. So my brother. Where does he live? Kisenyi. Can you find him? Yes, I think we can find him. What's your name? Yomana. What's your second name? Andre. When did you go to the Congo? 1994. Where were your parents? They stayed behind in Rwanda. Most of the Alir soldiers will soon be released or integrated into the Rwandan army as soon as they've undergone a so-called re-education program. 16,000 Alir soldiers have already done so. Colonel Habimana faces a different fate. He was major in the army at the time and uh, he's also on the, on the list of the category one, uh, uh, meaning the planners of genocide. My conscience is clear. Uh, we are holding him separate from the others, and I think we need to try it. Uh, I'm one of the planners of this. The guerrillas have, in the last seven years, survived genocide, civil war, and the ongoing insecurity and infiltration. Their survival is a tribute to, among others, the dedication of a remarkable group of people. The road to the Volcano National Park, the 13,000 hectare gorilla reserve in northwestern Rwanda. Here, 160 mountain gorillas find sanctuary. This was the first national park in Africa. In July 1999, guerrilla tourism resumed. At the moment, up to 150 tourists visit the park every month. It is said to be one of the most exhilarating wildlife experiences in the world. It is uh, a challenge to keep this for humanity. Uh, it's one park that is visited uh, from thick and thin. People keep coming. 
They tend to ignore the warnings of embassies when we have problems. They just keep insisting, please make us reach there. Because they are so, such special and unique animals, I think that we have to do our, our utmost to, to, to try and keep them alive, keep, keep the population alive. Uh, the gorillas are there, they have to be protected, but they are vulnerable. Uh, but as I said, the tourists who really insist on going there, they are escorted, they are, they are protected, and uh, we have not had an incident. We've only just been able to establish that there has been an increase. We have no idea. For more than 10 years, we've not known how many gorillas there were. Uh, at the end of the year 2000, we did a count of all known gorillas in 359. It's increased 10% over 11 years, which is a small increase, but it, given the conditions they're living in, it's, it's very encouraging. I think something drastic could happen to the population, and they could be harmed if by, by war or by, by disease. But I, I don't think they'll be wiped out in the near, near future. The National Park is a small island of pristine rainforest, surrounded by the most densely populated territory in Africa. In a country where land is scarce, the government has embarked on a massive drive to inform locals about the value of the National Park. It brings in foreign currency, the good air we breathe and the rain we need. This is more important than the problems from the park. You people from far away must assist us and put up a fence. We must prevent animals from eating our crops. A fence will make us happy. There is a gentleman already studying the plan, how big this area is and how many rivers flow through it. If that can be done, this place will be a paradise. The gorillas cause no problems here. Yes, yes, they are innocent. In Rwanda, every move a gorilla makes is noticed by a unique group of people, the gorilla trackers of the volcanoes. Francois Biramana has been a tracker for 21 years and worked with the legendary gorilla conservationist Diane Fossey. These people follow the gorillas every day, give them names and even bury them. They are completely involved in the gorillas' lives because it's their, their daily job. They spend all day every day with the gorillas. And so they just, I think they view them as family. And they, they get really involved and they get very worried if somebody's sick. And um, they're very, very attached to the animal. Nah. You see, it's one closer here. It is a name. Nyakarima. Hmm? It's a block back. You see the chief, the big chief, Munani, is uh, the chief of the group. It's 20 years. They've only done one or two years of secondary school, and they speak either Kenya or Wanda or just a little bit of French, and they don't, to, they don't write in their reports the details of what they know. I've tried to get them to write about the gorillas, and they always write very brief, uh, no detail and it's all up here. They know so much. It's a Sunday afternoon. The trackers get together on the edge of the gorilla park. This is a time for gorilla talk, for the older trackers to share their experiences with the youngsters. How does it speak and how do you speak to it? If you see it and it's scared, you call it like this. <laughs> When you are with them, there is another way we speak. Hmm. As my friend is saying, you use that language when they are at a place where there is food and they are eating and are happy. Or like this, one one sees food, he calls the others, come, this is, this is sweet. A newborn baby in your group, how do you feel? I'm very happy. 
What about you? I'm so happy. When I see the mother holding the baby, it's in the same way that I'm holding this bottle. When it wants to scare you, what does it do? It beats itself on the chest. But sometimes it also does that when it's happy. I am David. Uh, you are very calm in the Parque Nacional de Volcan. This one is uh, the massive, volcanic massive. This massive is between three countries, Rwanda, Congo, and Uganda. So in this massive, we have mountain gorillas. The group which one we go to visit today is Susa group. This group have 35 members. The chief, his name is Kurira, Kurira. But vice chief, the second of group, his name is Kwakani. We have a young baby. It is born in May, just this, this, this year. The baby's name is Urguibutu, in Kinyarwanda. It's mean to the near infancy. The great apes, gorillas, chimpanzees, and orangutans are man's closest relatives on this planet. They share 98% of human genes, and their behavior is startlingly similar to that of man. An adult gorilla has the intelligence of a five-year-old human child. Mountain gorillas are on average bulkier than other varieties, with a silverback weighing up to 200 kilograms. A silverback usually has a harem of three to five wives, each of whom could raise about six offspring. They live, on average, up to the age of 40. Mountain gorillas can survive nowhere else but in the high altitude of the volcanoes. All the animals in captivity are lowland gorillas. If we fail to protect these animals in their natural habitat, they will be gone forever. The gorilla trackers have paid a high price for their dedication to these animals. They live in an area that's not safe. Several have been killed in crossfire or whilst protecting their gorilla families. In Rwanda, there are two tracker groups, Diane Fossies and the National Park Trackers. I think, I think the National Park staff, did, um, they lost a lot of stuff. I think they lost about half their staff. They didn't use that many. But that's because I rented three houses in town and moved everyone into town so that they were not vulnerable. The day after our interview with Liz Williamson, tracker Matthias Mirapini was shot dead. Matthias and a group of trackers were following a family of gorillas when they stumbled across a band of infiltrators. These are his tracker friends that carried him down the mountain and buried him the next day. They then went back into the forest to look for the gorillas. <laughs> 